Okay, so I decided to go out of the of the usual uh, tutorial video and uh, jump into the thick of things and answer questions because a lot of people often say uh, or I was told, yes, I understand the material, but then when I come over to ask questions or to answer questions, things get mixed up. And in order for us to avoid this mix up, we need to arm ourselves with knowledge as to answer as many questions as possible. And these questions that I post here are from the department itself. And they contain pretty much all the questions that you can expect about, let's just say, action potentials, or at least some of the questions with respect to action potentials in biological membranes. And uh, obviously, if you answer these questions and you understand the answers, uh, you will probably be impervious if these questions come up in your exam. So we're going to kick start here. And these are a bunch of questions, lots of questions, and we're just going to tackle them one at a time. And now what I want you to do is pause the screen, pause it, if you want to take your time and try and tackle these questions. So this is your time to pause. Perfect. So we're going to start tackle them one by one, one by one. How much are pure lipid membranes permeable to ions? And if we're saying that um, pure lipid membranes, essentially, and when we're saying pure lipid membranes, if this is the membrane bilayer, if this is the membrane bilayer, how do ions get through? Well, they have uh, specific proteins that are channel forming, and uh, maybe they have some, uh, another form of facilitated diffusion of carrier molecules that get them in. But when we're talking about membranes that are only made of lipids, that means that there aren't any ion channels, there aren't any ion channels, and there aren't there aren't any ion channels and there aren't any facilitated uh, diffusion proteins. So the answer is, in a, in a membrane that only has lipid, pure lipids, ions are not going to be able to get through at all. So zero, the answer is zero. It is not going to be permeable to these ions at all. Next, how are ion channel proteins localized in the membrane? And we know, and this is in the minimals, that we can either have a diffused, a diffused uh, pattern or a patch and cap formation, patch and cap formation. And this was reviewed in, in, in past videos. And you are going to have time to, uh, to pause in between questions in case you're wondering. So, how does the transport speed of ion channels compare with that of ion pumps and transport proteins? And this may be, maybe you know or maybe you don't, but ion channels are the quickest. They're the Ferrari's form of transport. Whenever an ion channel for sodium enters, uh, a lot of sodium goes in really, really, really quick. So sodium, or rather any type of ion channel, is the fastest in its category. So ion channels are always the fastest. So this is the answer. Ion channels are the fastest. What conditions are required for ion flow through ion channel? And well, there's really two conditions that I can think about right out the bat. First of all, I need for that, um, for that channel to be open. We need for that channel to be open because if this channel is closed, if it's sealed tight, nothing can come in. And also, another thing that we need is because this is a form of passive diffusion, this is facilitated passive diffusion, I need to have a chemical gradient. I need to have a bunch of molecules on one side and less molecules on the other side, and then molecules are going to come through. If there's the same concentration on both sides, molecules are not really going to be moving through the channel at all. There isn't going to be a net flux. So this is, uh, this is my answer, and we're going to keep on going. What determines the direction of ion flow through a channel? And well, it's pretty simple. The direction of an ion flow through a channel is determined by the chemical gradient. It's determined by the chemical gradient, just like so, just like so. If I have, or we could say the electrochemical gradient would be more correct to say, the electrochemical gradient. Or uh, another answer would be the uh, ions, the ions um, equilibrium potential, equilibrium potential. All are good answers. But the best answer would probably be the electrochemical potential. 
or the electrochemical equilibrium is going to be the one that decides which way is the ion going to go through the channel. Very good. And we covered all of that. We can expect the ion to go from uh, high concentration to low concentration. Very good. Under what condition is there no ionic flow? Is there no ionic flow through an open channel? Under what condition is there no ionic flow through an open channel? And this basically means when am I going to have when am I going to have an open channel? And there's not going to be any particles going through it. Well, if the chemical gradient of both sides on both sides is the same, is the exact same, I'm not going to have any particles going through it because there's no chemical gradient. And in the same manner, if the equilibrium potential for sodium, the equilibrium potential for sodium is negative 89, and negative 89 tends to be the membrane potential at that point, then sodium is not going to move anywhere. So these are the two answers. The one answer would be, and these are two correct answers, one answer would be if the chemical potential, the chemical gradient on both sides of the channel is equal, then there's not going to be any net ionic flow. Or if we're talking about one permeating ion, if we have one permeating ion and we're at it, its equilibrium potential and the channels for this ion is, are open, then this ion is not really going to move anywhere because it is at its equilibrium potential. And if you feel like you are not really, you don't really, you haven't brushed up against it, well, you can just uh, go back and look at the videos that I described in. So we're going to keep on going. What kind of gating states can an ion channel assume? And really, there are, there are two, two channels of which we can talk about at this point. We have Maybe I'll switch colors. Yeah, I think I'll do that. We have the sodium channels, and I'm actually going to even move a little bit further. We have the sodium channels. We have the sodium channel, and we have the potassium channel. And we know that the potassium channel is simple. It has the closed state, and it has the open state, and it can interchange between the two. One can turn into the other. We have the sodium. It's slightly more elegant. We have open, and then after open, we have inactive and inactive turns into closed, and then closed goes back into open. And these are the uh, states, the gating states. So where are we? Uh, da, 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 da. What is a voltage clamp? And a voltage clamp is basically uh, a way of uh, holding the membrane potential at a controlled value, independent of all the currents that are flowing through the membrane. And what do I mean by that? Let's just say I have a membrane here membrane here and I decide to open some channels here maybe open some channels here maybe close these green channels and I'm doing this so I can get to negative 50 let's just say that I, I want to get to negative 50 for whatever reason but voltage clamp says I don't care what what the flows what what the ions are doing here I really don't care I'm just gonna put an electrode through you here and here, and I'm going to apply whatever voltage I want. So the membrane potential is going to be held at a controlled value independent of the uh, ionic, uh, the ionic currents through the, uh, the channels. And according to the Goldman-Hodgkin-Cutts equation, what factors determine the membrane potential? And there are two, really. First of all is the concentration, concentration, concentration and the second is permeability permeability these are the two factors according to the Goldman to the Goldman Hodgkin cuts equation what is meant by action potential well I would say if this is an open essay what is an action potential an action potential is an all non-response event in which membrane potential drastically changes in in a very specific orchestrated manner this came out pretty smooth. So yeah, that's, that's what I would write. What cells can fire action potential? And really, pretty much a, a great deal of cells can do that. But the department was so graceful as to give us two distinct, two distinct, uh, two distinct examples that we need to know. One is muscle cells, muscle cells, and the next is neurons, neurons. And for muscle cells, we can expect contraction, muscle contraction, and for neurons, we can expect a signal, signal transduction, 
So you don't transduction. And you do need to know that. You do need to know that. Okay? And we're going to keep on going, and this is your chance to, again, pause if you want to work on these questions. Very good. Let's get to it. What characteristics do the action potential of certain cell type possess? Well, we already went through it, that it has a specific shape, and this is for a given cell, has specific shape, specific amplitude, and a specific duration. And when we're going to get to electrocardiogram, we will see the uh, the action potential curve of a myocardiac fiber, and it is going to be different than the one we've seen now, but it's going to be characteristic. It's going to be characteristic of it. Perfect. Well, we're going to keep on going. Uh, how is stimulus strength encoded via action potential? And we discussed it both in the last and the, and the one video before the last. The strength of the stimulus is coded via the frequency. frequency. Very good. What phases do action potentials have? And for that, I'm just going to bounce through to, the, to this lecture here. And this is brought to us again by Professor Pani. But we can actually see, we can actually solve for the different, the different mechanisms that we have, starting from the beginning. Let's just see if I can zip back. Very good. Starting from the beginning, we have threshold. And then after the threshold, we have the open, opening of sodium channels, depolarization going up to the peak. At the peak, we're going to have the inactivation of sodium channels, and then we're going to have repolarization, the opening of potassium channels, hyperpolarization, and then we're going to go back to our membrane potential. Very good. And if you just go through the graph, and, and, and this is what, what I would do, is if I were asked to to give the different phases of action potential, I would just go, okay, this is it, it goes up, goes down, and there, very good. And now I'll just pretty much talk to myself. I have a certain intensity I need to go through, this is my threshold. Now I have the depolarization, this is the inactivation, this is the repolarization, this is the hyperpolarization, and I find it easier for me to visualize it, visualize it this way. And if I really want to show off in an exam, I would just also add the I will also add the, what the hell, there we go. I will also add the ARP, the absolute refractory period, refractory period, and the RRP as well, which is right around here. Very good. We're going to keep on trucking, and we're going to ask, what is Cronaxi and Ryobase? And really, um, what you need to know is you can just open that one, uh, just view that one video in regards to it. So I'm just going to throw in the explanation. Ryobase is the Ryobase and the is the intensity applied for infinite amount of time to get an action potential. And Cronaxi is the time by which we need to apply twice the intensity of the Ryobase to get an action potential. There you go. And if you're wondering how come it went out so smoothly without thinking twice, it's only because I went through these definitions quite often. I went through this, these definitions um, quite a few number of times. So after a while, it kind of gets to be in a second nature. So if you review these questions often, you can expect to get a high success rate. Keeping on going, what is meant by absolute and relative refractory period? And again, this was in the last video, so I'm just going to say it and explain it. Absolute, absolute refractory period is the time by which uh, it doesn't matter if we apply further uh, stimulus intensity, we will not get another action potential. And relative refractory period is a period by which attaining another action potential is possible, although it will require a higher intensity stimulation. So, how does the membrane potential change if the permeability of the membrane significantly increases for sodium or for potassium? And this is pretty much easy to say, even though, even if you don't remember what I said about the, the theoretical upper and lower limit, but if I just draw the action potential curve, if I draw this curve, I know that we have a spike here because sodium channels are open. So, if if uh, there's an increase in permeability for sodium, I know that the membrane potential is going to turn positive. And here I know that sodium channels are inactivated, and there's a drop here in the membrane potential because potassium channels are high in permeability. 
So if permeability is high for potassium, that is going to affect the membrane potential and bring it towards the negative. It is going to lower it. And what feedback mechanisms work during action potential? Well, positive feedback for sodium feeding itself. Sodium channels, let's just say sodium channels open, sodium channels open, sodium, sodium comes in, sodium comes in, and then sodium comes in, there's more depolarization, and then there's more opening of sodium channels. And we can say that the uh, negative feedback is the potassium coming over, saying, hey guys, party's over, go home, I'm repolarizing the membrane. And we've successfully tackled uh, all the questions that the department threw our way in, with respect to, um, to action potential. Not so much biological membranes, because there's a lot of questions that we could, we could have also covered. But as far as action potential, this is pretty much all, all, all they could think about. So hopefully you have found this helpful. And I'll see you in the next video about ion channel.